Hello, beloved church family. God bless you guys. Welcome to our Saturday night worship service. Oh my goodness, I miss you guys so much. I just want to say thank you so much for just joining us in worship. Hallelujah. Regardless what time it is, we don't limit God. Amen. And I'm just so excited as far as with this new season that God has ushered in. Hallelujah. As we just lift up the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We just lift up the name of Lord Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit. Say his name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is blessed, blessed beyond measure, that no matter what we are going through, that you chose to worship Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I choose to worship. Hallelujah. Rejoice. Praise God. Just want to give a shout out to uh, Brother Todd Church. I just thank God for him. He, uh, he texted me the other day and said, you know, j just a suggestion. We might not need to use the, the microphone. And praise God, it's moments like that where it's like, hallelujah. No duh, huh? Amen. So pray for me, church. Listen, anyone who says they know what they're doing, and especially during times like this, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't. I don't. Glory to God. And, and I need your prayer. Amen. I, I, I don't. I, we, we would never imagine that this would be happening, right? But by the grace and mercy of Lord Jesus Christ, by the grace, say with me, the grace, by the grace of Holy Spirit who is alive in each one of us as his beloved children, I am so thankful that Lord Jesus Christ gives us wisdom. Amen? And I give Brother Todd a shout out because, as you can, as you can tell, the audio is a lot clearer. Praise God. So um, once again, just a, a special shout out to Brother Todd. I just want to say thank you. And uh, of course, keep uh, our open arms church family, hallelujah, the body of Christ. Keep them lifted up and keep the church family as well, Todd and Kathy. Daniel and all the rest of the family, hallelujah, restoration in Jesus' name, amen. Um, I'm excited, hallelujah, I am so excited. Uh, Holy Spirit has an action-packed night tonight. Now I must confess, you heard me say this before in the past. Now granted, I don't know how long ago that was, all the days, I like to say all the days just bleed together, amen. All the days, I mean, look how fast everything is going by, right? And um, the reason why I say that is because I thought that this worship service that was uh, putting, uh, that was getting put together, I should say, uh, today, was for Sunday worship, and uh, it's just so cool how God is like, no son, that's for t tonight, and I said, okay, Lord, thank you, Father, amen, so I'm just excited because it always gets, say it with me, gooder and gooder in Jesus' name, he's the only one good, amen, and man, I miss you guys so much, I just love you all so, so much, praise God. So the, the worship service is titled, Breastplate of Righteousness. And in this worship service, we're going to be in two books. Now granted, wherever else Holy Spirit takes us, I just know for a fact that these two books are on our slides. It's Romans 10, chapter 10, verse 1 through 5, and Ephesians 6, verse 14. Now if you recall, I mentioned to you that Holy Spirit put a charge over his holy church as, as the body of Lord Jesus Christ, unified in Holy Spirit, amen, which means the gospel of peace is alive in us, hallelujah. The gospel of peace is alive in us, amen. We have the peace of God because Lord Jesus Christ said so, amen. And if you recall, Holy Spirit said that we are going to be touching on the armor, amen. Now granted, I don't know how Holy Spirit wants to lay this all out. Praise God. As you know, Pastor John and I and anybody else who, who preaches, we don't have a series, right, that we go through. We don't. We don't have a series. We are led by Holy Spirit. Praise God. And Holy Spirit determines what needs to be preached. Amen. For he's the only teacher. Say it with me. Holy Spirit, teach me, Lord. And praise God that we can just call upon the name of Lord Jesus Christ. And you know that God is just so happy as our Heavenly Father. A good and perfect Father. Amen. Amen. And I pray this over every soul. That with all this chaos going around in this world. That they're just crying out to God. Because He is the only cure. Amen. He is our only salvation. Hallelujah. The salvation that we celebrate, that we worship, it's all through Christ our Lord. It's His glory, amen? It's His salvation. It's His joy, hallelujah? It's His joy that blesses us with the overflowing 
anointing, the overabundance. Hallelujah. Oh, you can't even put into words of how he blesses you. Amen. Say with me, God loves me. Say with me, God is my father. Hallelujah. Say with me, Father God, I bless you. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm excited as far as getting into this, as far as the breastplate of righteousness. Let's just dive right in. Amen. I'm going to pray real quick, and then we're going to dive right in. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit says so. Pray with me. Praise God. Father, I thank you so much for Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father, that you're a good and perfect Father. You are who you are, the great I am. You are God Almighty. You are the only God, Father. And I just thank you so much that you would send your only son to come and save us as your beloved children. That you would sacrifice your one and only, your perfect beloved, your everything. You would sacrifice Lord Jesus for us. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you would leave the throne to come to this fallen world. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for you are perfect and you are worthy. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that every, every word that you spoke, every word that you spoke from the mouth of God, our Father, that you completely fulfilled. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for setting us free through your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we bless you. We thank you for you are our every breath. You are our seal for all of eternity. And Holy Spirit, as we worship you, as we bless you, as one body in Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for a fresh anointing that your presence flows through us like never before. And Father, change me. Forgive us, Father God. Forgive us if we hurt you. Forgive us, Father God, if our thoughts r run crazy. Forgive us if we speak curses, Father. We plead your blood, Lord Jesus Christ, over our soul, spirit, and body, Father. And we thank you, Holy Spirit. Bless us with your wisdom in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's beloved said, amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Praise God. Give somebody a high five. Amen. If you're by yourself, just do what I did. Hallelujah. Give an angel a high five. Praise God. Hallelujah. I just love it that a lot of us are just laughing about that. But it's true. All the angels are around us. Glory to God. And I just like you, beloved child of God, I just like you. I just want to bless God with a woohoo moment, right? Like, oh my goodness. And of course, our Father knows everything. But remember, He gives us free will. Which means the choice is ours. The choice is ours to make. He doesn't force us. Amen? And glory to God as a beloved child of God. Don't you just love to bless God with just an extra ump as far as hallelujah, right? Thank you, Father. Amen? <laughs> just rejoice. Hallelujah. And... uh we just bless God. Amen. Let's get right into this. Praise God. Romans 10 verse 1. Hallelujah. Romans 10 verse 1. You ready? Say amen. Praise God. Say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, you may be on your couch in, in the room. Or you may be on the road or in the parking lot. Whatever it is. But, you know, let's do this together. Hallelujah. This may be recorded, but guess what? We don't limit God. Amen. We do not limit God in Jesus' name. Say it with me. I rebuke. Satan, I plead the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, bless me in the overflow in Jesus' name. And all God's beloved said, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. Amen. Now we got to remember that Apostle Paul is writing this. Right? Writing this to the church and charging the church and reminding them that there is many of you that are falling back to your old ways. And so the Apostle Paul is touching on this now and he's, he's showing agape. He's showing his heart. And glory to God, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, you will not only feel the power of the anointing of this message that God wants to speak through us. Amen. Say it with me. Through us. Through us. But God is going to show the heart of a disciple, the heart of a beloved child of God. Amen? Because isn't it our calling that we need to be lifting up not only the situation, our church body, our leadership, 
but all the souls, amen? That in the time of all this chaos, hallelujah, we rejoice because there are souls turning their lives over to Lord Jesus Christ, amen? Hallelujah, yes, we plead the blood over all those that are working, working in the grocery store, in the medical field, hallelujah. We pray that in Jesus' name, that, that God, God, God blesses them, hallelujah, that his blood covers them. It's only through Lord Jesus Christ now. I even pray that these workers are saying to themselves, oh my goodness, look at all this. I need to get right with God, right? However, however it works, I'm going to tell you, remember, the devil does not have a plan for your life. Only God has the plan. Can I get a hallelujah? Woo! Hallelujah. Only Father God has the plan. And it's all through Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? You want to know the plan for your life? Go through Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit will adopt you into the family of God. Amen? Make you a citizen of heaven. Adopted. Born again. Hallelujah. That's what the Word of God says. Being born again. Hallelujah. And being born again through Holy Spirit... We are now set free, hallelujah, free, say that with me, free from the bondage of sin, from the bondage of anything of this world. And by the grace of God, we have this anointing, amen? And this is Apostle Paul's heart. He's praying right now for the Israelites because they're going back to bondage. Now, this is powerful now. Because remember, Lord Jesus Christ already came, died, rose again. And here God divinely orchestrates the Apostle Paul. Now we got to remind ourselves that the Apostle Paul, he was a great teacher of the law. Amen? Not only a great teacher, but he was also the persecutor of all the Christians. He would carry out persecution. He would hunt Christians down. And guess what? They would stone him. They would kill him. A murderer. I know some of you are like, dang, it's true. But yet by the grace of God, when he had that encounter with Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus, you know why? His heart was already conditioned. If you recall, when he saw Lord Jesus, he even said, Lord, see what took place. Glory to God. He, he writes about it, right? He writes about it, that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, why, did, why does the Apostle Paul write like that? It happened to him. Glory to God, it happened to him in that encounter with Christ. Right there, I believe with all my heart. Lord, boom, salvation. Hallelujah. Dead. Right? You may say, why you say dead? Dead. Blinded. Blinded. Right? In darkness for three days. But I'll tell you right now, even though he was physically in darkness, he couldn't see any brighter. Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. And to get his vision back, right, through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that light shines through him now, right? He saw the world a completely different way. He didn't see it through the eyes of the law, of the commandments. He didn't see any of that no more. He saw it through the eyes of of grace, of mercy, of Holy Spirit. Amen? It's only through the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So he's reaching out to them and saying, I'm praying that you guys may be, aren't we all doing that? We're praying for this whole world. Amen? Family members. Amen? Children, uncles, aunties, whatever it is, you're praying. Amen? And praise God, keep praying. Because guess what? God hears. And God will be the one to go and do it. Amen? Don't allow the conditions or the timing of the blessing to interfere with your relationship and worship with God Almighty. Amen. Can I say it again? I know this is a mouthful, but Holy Spirit's the one saying it. Glory to God, we can say it again. Don't allow the conditions, the terms, the timing of the blessing to interfere with your worship unto God, with your relationship. Hallelujah. With your prayers, with your thanksgiving. Amen. Just because it doesn't look like anything is happening, that does not mean anything. Hallelujah. Amen. It doesn't mean anything. Because God Almighty goes before us. Amen. And so thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that we can hold fast, hold firmly to this absolute truth. That when I speak that word in thanksgiving and prayer, aligned with your word through obedience, 
in worship and lifting up the name of Lord Jesus Christ, amen, Holy Spirit says, there's light. Amen? Say it with me. Let there be light. Hallelujah. See, only God knows when you said that, who you were thinking about. Some of you need healing right now. Amen? Let there be light. Whoo, hallelujah. The very words God spoke through Christ Jesus and Holy Spirit manifested the miraculous. Amen? All this that you see, right? Say it again. Let there be light. Hallelujah. Verse 2, for I, I can testify about them. Why can he testify about them? Why can he testify? That's a strong word now, testify. You testify? Hallelujah, I testify. Well, how can you testify? Why do you testify? Well, for us, New Covenant Church, Jesus Christ is Lord. I can testify. Jesus Christ is Lord. The Holy One came from heaven, lived a perfect life, fulfilled everything. Right? We'll say this over and over until we're raptured out of here. Hallelujah. This is all we know to do now is to glorify God. Amen. How can you testify? He is my Lord and my Savior, which means because Jesus Christ is my Lord, no matter what I go through, hallelujah, I will crucify this flesh because my God promises, my Father promises, say it again, my Father promises that I will be resurrected in glory. Hallelujah. Speak that over your wife, over your husband, over your children. Amen? This is the fight, beloved church. Let us not get lazy, right? Let us not get religious with God. Amen? God is intimate. He's in a relationship with us. He is in us for all eternity. Hallelujah. And let's just give him all the praise. Amen? Let's give him praise. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So he can testify because not only did he come from that and he was a leader. Remember, he was a teacher of the law. And not only that, he carried it out to the fullest extent. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? He didn't just teach. He killed for it. Huh? And now he can testify because he once had that same passion, that temporary passion. Remember? It's all emotions, all right here, right? Emotional roller coaster, right? All right here. So he said, I can testify that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Whoo, hallelujah. This is powerful now, beloved church family. Here the Apostle Paul is writing through the anointing of Holy Spirit in his relationship with God Almighty. This is the written word of God now, amen? Romans 10, verse 2. And look, he says, but their zeal is not based on knowledge, which means their worship, their zealousness, their passion, their excitement, it's ignorant. That's what the word is saying right now. Let's continue. Since they do not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their, say that word with me, own. And see what the Apostle Paul is doing, not only for the Israelites, but for the entire world now. Here we are, right? April 2020. Here we are now, April 2020. And does this not echo throughout the entire world? Don't worship God based on your own righteousness. Don't worship God based on your own opinion, on your own terms. Don't worship God based on your own feelings or your own emotions or your own, right? The Apostle Paul is just taking this right to the heart, cutting them deep. And, and, and he's going to get really deep into this now, but he's, he's already telling them, listen, you're doing this on your own. You're going back to when the law was in place. You're going back to when Jesus Christ, our Lord, didn't come yet. And what an insult that is to God Almighty that you chose to lay that down, that, you know what, I hear, you, I hear you, Lord Jesus, and yeah, I got you as my Lord and Savior, but I have to go do this now, something extra. Right? That's like trying to take extra credit for the test, and the teacher didn't even assign any extra credit. Can I get an amen? Teacher says, here, there's 10 questions on this test, Right? We know truly there's 613 questions. More about that later, amen? 
There's 10 questions on this test, right? Nobody could answer the questions. Here comes Lord Jesus Christ. He answered them all. Hallelujah, all 613 of them, praise God. All, all, everything fulfilled. Only through the perfect blood of the Lamb of God, amen. His name is, hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. You beat me to it, Lord Jesus Christ. Is your Lord Jesus Christ perfect? Huh, amen? My Lord Jesus Christ is perfect. Praise God. See, th don't you love moments like this? This is between you and God. It doesn't matter what a preacher says, an evangelist. It doesn't matter what kind of conference you're at or what kind of quote-unquote revival. This is intimate now between you and God. Is your Jesus Christ perfect? Because my Lord Jesus Christ is perfect. He left heaven. Hallelujah. He left heaven to come. And the reason why he did it was divinely orchestrated by my Father God. Amen. Say his name, Father God. Father God divinely orchestrated everything where enough was said. Enough was said. No more of this. Right? Now here's Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. Here's Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And praise God Lord Jesus Christ came because he answered all the questions to perfection. Now, isn't it interesting that it's just our human nature, that it's done, it's perfect, it's, it's complete, but it's just like our human nature to say, yeah, but I need to do something else. You don't believe me, why in the world do we have all these denominations? You don't believe me, why in the world do, do Christians badmouth each other, grumble, complain? I pray you don't. You know, I'm so thankful to Holy Spirit that His church, His holy church, Open Arms Community Church, we don't do that. We don't judge nobody. We don't complain, grumble. We don't do backbiting. Why? It hurts your anointing. Say with me, my anointing is through Holy Spirit. Amen? And we bless His presence, living a life, holy, acceptable, pleasing to God. Amen? So it's amazing that we put all these extra credit questions and there, there was never any extra credit, right? And so here again, Apostle Paul is making them know that they sought to establish their own righteousness with God. They did not submit to God's righteousness, amen? And here's a, here's a great picture of a Pharisee, Sadducee, a teacher of the law back in the day. I blew it up in this picture right here. It's perfect. It's perfect picture. It is. It is because it's the fruit of what the Holy Bible, the written word, the spoken word through Christ of their very nature, right? Accusations, right? Insecurities, pride, right? This is what I know, right? They continue to, 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 to tempt. Remember, the evil one tempts, right? And it's, it, it's, it's sad that it comes to this way, but what God is showing us quickly now is that when we try to rely on our own strength and understanding, this is what manifests. And the question is, is do you believe in this righteousness? Because see, this is what the Apostle Paul was telling the church family. Brothers and sisters, why are you going back to this? Right? Why are, you, why are you tying yourself up again in bondage? Why? Or do you believe that this is righteousness? See, there's a difference, church. Amen? We are the body of Lord Jesus Christ. You are chosen, called out. Hallelujah. Called out, chosen. Say with me, I am chosen. God himself, our Father, chose you. Hallelujah. Now listen, he chose every soul because Lord Jesus Christ died for the entire world. Can I get an amen? Lord Jesus Christ died for the entire world. Every soul. Amen. And it's up to us to just continuously shine agape. Hallelujah. Agape! Shine agape and speak blessings, speak life, amen? Don't allow darkness to come in. Don't allow darkness to come in that way, amen? Rebuke it, rebuke it, hallelujah. And bless God by just speaking life, 
Hallelujah. Speaking life. Say it with me. Speak life. Amen. So do you believe in this righteousness? Amen. Now here we are in verse 4, Romans 10. Christ, get ready now, is the culmination. Say it with me. Culmination. Woo! That's a powerful world now. Culmination. Let's define culmination real quick. The noun. The highest or climactic point of something. The highest or climactic point of something. It don't get no gooder now. It's just the highest. Amen. The greatest. Hallelujah. Especially as attained after a long time. And I love this because they put an example. You, all, all you can do is Google it and I'll pull it up. The project was the culmination of 13 years of research. Of course, that example is self-explanatory, but Holy Spirit says, say this, that it took 13 years, right, of research, reverse engineering, engineering, development, testing, all this, right? This is what this statement says. And the product of that was the culmination, was those 13 years of all that that was said, done, took place, 13 years, and boom, here's the product, right? And it's a statement made saying, all that time, this is the culmination. Voila! Ta-da! Right? Amen? This is what Holy Spirit wanted me to type. For it to echo out through all of eternity. Amen? Christ was the culmination of blank years. The reason why it's blank? Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. The beginning and the end of eternity. Blank years of disobedience. The beauty of what the gospel is doing, hallelujah, remember now, gospel is good news, gospel is Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ left his gospel, and the gospel is now the gospel of peace, amen, you nailed it, the gospel of peace, who is peace, hallelujah, Holy Spirit, amen, the gospel of Holy Spirit as the new covenant church, hallelujah, free, hallelujah, say with me, free, through the blood of Lord Jesus Christ, that anointing, that power rests on us. Oh, hallelujah. Give God praise. Amen. That the anointing of God has rested on you for all of eternity. Amen. Christ was the culmination of Alpha and Omega all these years. Amen. Of disobedience. Meaning, because we were disobedient children from the very beginning. From the very beginning. Right? When Adam sinned. Right? Right? That everything was divinely orchestrated for Lord Jesus Christ to come, to save us. Well, Pastor Joey, what about the law? Including that. Amen? You don't believe me? Let's get back into the scripture. Christ is the culmination, amen, of the law. So you talk about every law. Yes, my voice just squeaked. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rejoice! You talk about every bit of the law, the written word, the spoken word. It is all Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Give God praise again. Amen. Praise God. Give somebody a high five. Hallelujah. Christ is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness for, say with me, everyone who, say that word with me, believes. Do you believe? Amen. I'm going to ask you some questions here. Do you believe in the righteousness of God? Amen. Do you believe in the goodness and perfection of God? Amen. Do you believe in the redemptive, perfect work of God? Amen. Praise God. Do you believe? Do you believe? Amen. I know many of you, praise God, I know who I'm talking to. Hallelujah. Many of you are like, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So here's a question. Do you believe this is a water park? Now, I'm going to put the picture, by the grace of God, I'm going to put the picture up on your screen, praise God. And at this moment, this, this picture is on your screen. And as you can see, if you glance at it, wow, it almost looked like a water park. Amen? Because you can see in the blue area, in the dark blue area, there's a little red crab there on your bottom left. There's a shark, actually, right there in the middle, right? And then you got the lighter color, and then you move over, and then you got, like, the sand color, right? I'm asking you, do you believe that this is a water park? I know many of you right now at home are saying, Brother Joey, I don't know if you've been away from the ocean that long, but that ain't no water park, right? Well, let me ask you this. What if, what if we went ahead and added that right there? The bottle of water. <laughs> what if we added that right there? Does that make it a water park? 
No, it does not, right? Do you believe that this is a water park? Yes, amen? You know, a park without water, it's just a park, right? Amen? And so the same thing applies if you believe, you see the difference behind it, and regardless if you put that bottled water there, right? It doesn't make it a water park. You just have a park with a bottle of water. And then, of course, you have that water park. Hallelujah. So what Holy Spirit wants to ask us is, do you believe in Lord Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the perfect Lamb of God? Do you believe in the blood of God? Do you believe in the resurrection? Holy Spirit. We just celebrated on Sunday. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit flowed through Pastor John, and it was just absolutely incredible. Amen. And now, and, and now Holy Spirit wants to just really drive this home because unfortunately a lot of people after Easter, they go back, guess what, to the old, right? They go back how it was. Rather than stepping into the anointing and into intimacy with God, they go back to the old. And this is what Holy Spirit's charging our church to make sure we make aware that we have to, in these, in these moments when the trumpet is about to go off, that we have to worship God like never before. It doesn't matter that we cannot come physically together yet. It doesn't matter. And these are those moments that we can bless God Almighty and just worship even more now than we were. I hear this all the time. Oh my goodness, I, I, I just loved it back when we were having worship service every day and we got, oh, I just can't wait to get back to church and everything. Guess what? Me too. But that cannot affect how intimate we get with God on a daily basis. Amen? And not just daily, of course, you know what I mean, but just continuously. Hallelujah. Because it's moments like this that you know, you could feel the pressure of the world. You can see how everyone's acting, speaking. That the world wants to grab your attention. That the world wants to make itself real to you. That whatever's floating around wants to make it real to you. I'm going to tell you in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ, the only thing real to me, the only thing real to me is the blood of my Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Is that my Jesus Christ, he is perfect. He is Lord, hallelujah. Say it with me, Jesus Christ is Lord. And it's his anointing, hallelujah. Say it with me, anointing. That Holy Spirit has sealed us as his beloved church, as his beloved children, amen. And the only thing floating around me are his angels, hallelujah, that are fighting for me, protecting me, hallelujah. Protecting his holy church, amen. And that we lift one another up in prayer, in thanksgiving. I thank God for you, family. I thank God for you in how God has divinely orchestrated for us to be here in Lebanon, Kentucky, of all places, right? In Open Arms Community Church, but for us to come together in the anointing of Holy Spirit, lifting up the name above every name, our Lord Jesus Christ, amen? And glory to God. Listen, God knows who you are. God knows who you are. Say it with me, I am. I am planted, hallelujah. I am rooted, hallelujah. I am, hallelujah, I am the fruit of Holy Spirit, amen? Holy Spirit fruits, hallelujah, overflow in me, in Jesus' name, amen? So do you believe, praise God? Isn't it funny, I love that water park picture, just can't get away from it, praise God. You can say it's a water park, but then where's the water, right? And this is the difference right now, as far as children of God. You say you believe in Lord Jesus Christ, right? You say you believe in Lord Jesus Christ. Is it his righteousness or is it your righteousness? Because remember, when it's our righteousness, that's pride. That's pride. But when it's his righteousness, glory to God, get ready, amen? We're going to close on this scripture in Ephesians 6, 14. Stand firm then. Hallelujah. 
Stand firm then. We know the only way you stand firm, praise God, is through the gospel of peace. Amen. Who is our peace? That's right. He has a name. Many of you beat me to it. His name is Holy Spirit. He is, hallelujah, the God of peace, the God of hope, the God of joy. Amen. It's his fruit. Hallelujah. It's God's fruit flowing through us as his beloved children. Amen. With that green line with there, right there in the middle, that word says with. Stand firm. Right? We have the gospel of peace. Amen. With the belt of truth buckled around your waist. With. Say with me. With. Whenever the word of God says with, that means it better be with. Amen. That means it, it better be together. Hallelujah. Better be one. Amen. With the breastplate of righteousness in place. Amen. Say with me, the breastplate of righteousness. Glory to God. Do you believe in his righteousness? Amen. See, beloved church family, there's, there, this is life-changing now. Holy Spirit will bless you with life-changing revelation if you just allow him to flow through you. Because I confess, many of you know, a big part of my testimony is that early in my Christian walk, when I got saved, you can ask Trish, we'll openly tell you, I became a Pharisee. Because when I got saved, I wanted to do everything for God, but yet my heart deceived me. My heart's very deceptive. All of our hearts are. The Word of God says it. And in that deception, pride, pride, started to renew my mind and it wasn't about it wasn't about the anointing of holy spirit it wasn't about the presence of god in my life it was about what did joey want you hear me what does joey want and guess what all that did as it kept on refreshing itself all it did was not only heap condemnation judgment bondage sins but it also called in wolves from the death that I was speaking, from the actions that I put out. It attracted the same kind. And guess what? It just got worse and worse. It was all about my righteousness to the point of almost losing Trish. But by the grace of God, because in my brokenness, this is what I love to tell a lot of my church family, that if you're truly sick and tired, God knows. Amen? You, you hear people say, oh, I'm just so sick and tired, but then what happens? They run back to it, right? You know, you're truly not sick and tired then, right? But God knows when you're truly sick and tired, and I thank Lord Jesus Christ, because I saw what manifested from my life was not Holy Spirit, it was all demonic. And by the grace of God, say with me grace, by the grace of God, Lord Jesus Christ said, are you ready to serve me? Or are you still going to serve yourself? Yes, God asked me that. Remember, God doesn't push himself on anybody. If he did, church, we would all be in heaven already. God would just save every soul just like that, because, right? God doesn't push himself. It's a choice. Hallelujah. Say it with me. It's a choice. And praise God, I chose him. And that's why when I preach and I tell you this, and Holy Spirit speaks it through me, that when I say, sometimes that hurts, I'm telling you from personal experience. I'm telling you just out of reverence to the gospel, the good news of Lord Jesus Christ. Did he not suffer? Whew. The, the, the price that was paid for God to have this relationship with us. And now that we have Holy Spirit, do we not think that we're, we're held accountable? Say it with me, no more, hallelujah, no more in Jesus' name. No more will I be de deceived by my righteousness, right? By my pride, by opinions. You could feel it. I know you know. I know you know. The moment somebody does you wrong and you just want to, right? Right there, Holy Spirit, just that, in a twinkle of an eye, Holy Spirit says, you don't, need to, you don't need to say that. 
say he's sorry. But I didn't do anything wrong. Sometimes God won't repeat himself. But by his grace and mercy, sometimes he will. Sometimes he will. He'll tell you, what did I say? You know what? I'm sorry. Amen? It's moments like this when you can completely rebuke your pride and emotions, your past hurt, past insecurities, past abuse, past things that the devil, say it, the devil did. Everything garbage, everything worse, everything foul, it's all the devil. God is good and perfect. Hallelujah. And God give us the anointing and the power that when that thing tries to rise up, you just take hold of that thing. Amen. You take hold of it and you say, here, daddy. Here. And the blood of Lord Jesus Christ is all over that thing. It's crucified, dead. Amen. And the anointing of Holy Spirit flows through you. Amen. Do you believe in his righteousness? He's the only one righteous. Amen. So there's an exchange now. Amen. When the worship becomes about what Lord Jesus Christ did for you and me, and the anointing, once again say it, anointing, Holy Spirit in you and in me, guess what? You know that we are only righteous because you beat me to it, Lord Jesus Christ is righteous. Amen? Do you believe in his righteousness? Hallelujah. When you say amen, this is the power and anointing of Holy Spirit. And this is, hallelujah, the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Praise God. This breastplate, uh, this breastplate of righteousness, hallelujah, as you see in the armor, just protects all the organs. Amen. But it goes deeper now when you understand as far as this true breastplate, right? The true armor itself is knowing that it's not based on my terms, my condition, my works, my righteousness. It's based on the perfect redemptive work of Christ our Lord. Amen. And it's in his redemption. It's in his perfection. Amen. It's in his sacrifice that we are now held accountable through the relationship that we have with Lord Jesus Christ through the gift of our Heavenly Father in Holy Spirit. Amen. And Holy Spirit in us Say with me, Holy Spirit in me will do a mighty work. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Do you receive that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Amen. Now, praise God. A few months ago when we started Saturday night, uh, Elder, Howard, uh, Elder Howard Lee, he asked as far as to, you know, if Holy Spirit gives us something to plug it in for a Sunday morning. And um, we're just going to say that right there in how we closed. That's, that's, that's what Holy Spirit said, so that's, we're just going to be obedient to do that. Amen. I love you guys. I thank God for you. I thank you for joining us on a Saturday night. Praise God. Please subscribe to our um, Open Arms Community Church channel on uh, YouTube. And uh, if you're not following us on Facebook, uh, please follow us on Facebook at Open Arms Church. Just for, you know, news and all that stuff. Um, we just love you so much. Praise God. We're so excited in this new season and coming back together in fellowship. I just cannot wait to, to hug you all. I know a lot of you are like, no, duh. Just can't wait to hug you all. And I'm just, I just love you guys so much. I thank God for your anointing. I thank God for you and your family. I thank God that you bless him the way you bless him. Hallelujah. And I thank you so much. I thank you so much for praying for your church body. Amen. I'll see you guys real soon. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. It just keeps getting gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. Love you. Mwah.